Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. Got three mods to talk about today. Wanted to let you guys know how they're doing so far. Three things that I've done already. Well, two that I've actually done and one that I had done because, frankly, I'm just not skilled enough to do that one. And we'll start with that one. It's the window tent. Now, all I had tented were the front two windows. Uh, the passenger and the driver's side, of course. I know there's a lot of people out there that will tent the whole truck, but it's not really necessary because everything from the driver's seating area, if you will, or the front, back, comes tented from the factory. So all you really need to do is kind of match that up, unless you want to go really, really dark. Now, what I went with was 20%. I always go 20% most recently anyway with all of my vehicles and I do that because I believe that matches most closely in looks anyway with what it comes with from the factory now is that legal no it's not legal uh, you do have to sign a waiver if you're going to a reputable tent shop uh, that basically says they're not responsible if you get pulled over and get a ticket or something because it's illegal I actually had to have tent removed not too long ago on my Jeep Gladiator, because here in South Texas, until January 2025, we had to have inspections, and they flagged me on that, and wouldn't pass the vehicle until I removed it. Coincidentally, they charged you to remove it right there. You could have it done at the inspection station. I don't know about that, but I didn't have a choice. Since we're all electronic these days, everything is in the system and I couldn't go to another inspection point, which crossed my mind, uh, and have it checked because it was already flagged. That's the first thing that I had done recently. And I say I'm not skilled enough because I'm not. Putting tent on windows is kind of like putting plaster on a wall. It's a skill, one that I don't possess. Next up, I did the phone mount what you guys are actually sitting on right now, or I finished up the foam mount. What it is, is a plate that goes into or actually replaces that little cubby area that's in your dash. I don't even know what people use that for. I guess you could throw stuff in there, but I can imagine when you hit the brakes hard enough or give it enough gas, everything comes flying out. So while I do think it's a neat idea, I don't think it's very practical for everyday use. So I didn't have any problems deleting that and using it for this holder. The most recent video I did, and I'll try to link both down below so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. But most recently I put the holders into it, the little one inch ball things that screw in and then the arms with a magnetic plate. I've always used in recent times a magnetic plate to hold my phone on. I just think it works the best. You put a little steel plate on the back of your phone with adhesive, it's very simple, on your case, not your phone, although you could, I guess, if you wanted to, I wouldn't advise it. And then it just holds with the magnets. It's very simple and the magnets are very strong. I've never had a foam fall off of these magnets, ever. Not like those suction cup mount things where I have had it happen. The third thing I did was, or were, the seat jackers. You know, the Tacoma and the Tundra both come with seats that you just can't get quite high enough in the front. Your legs kind of dangle over the front of it. There's no good support. So if you put a little spacer, if you will, which is what the seat jackers are, underneath the legs of the front seat, kind of pop it up a little bit, you can get a much better seating position in either the Tacoma or the Tundra. I've got mine in right now. There's three different levels you can get with this particular seat jacker I used. Uh, I went with only one. It's about you know, a little over a quarter inch, maybe pushing half an inch, something like that. And it's just right, just the way that I like it. Matter of fact, because I put those in, I actually had to angle my seat back a little bit further forward because before it was too far back. So I guess I gained better posture in doing this as well. Very simple mod to do. Again, I'll link this one down below in case you want to check out the install. It's one of the simplest ones you can do. Requires a little bit of oomph to break free those factory nuts that you have, or screws that you have to take out. But other than that, it's really simple to do and anybody can do it. Very, very easy. 
By the way, before I forget, I always forget to do this. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Helps out the channel, shows me you're interested. I'd really appreciate it. Just click it right now. I'll wait. I'm not going to sit here and wait, but I do hope that you guys will do that. So, so far, that's three mods I've done to this truck. There's one thing that I let go with the Jeep Gladiator that now I wish I would have kept. I don't know. I just wasn't thinking, I guess. And that is the fourth brake light uh, for the hitch back there, the hitch receiver brake light. You can stick it in and plug it in between the wiring harness in the back for the towing lights and stuff so that when you hit the brake, it lights up. When you go into reverse, it lights up. It's nice and bright back there. And it also has a strobing feature. Strobes a couple of times just to wake people up so that they don't get too close or hit the back of your truck. I should have kept that off of the Jeep Gladiator. I don't know why I didn't. I just didn't consider. I guess I got excited when I decided to go ahead and drop the, the, the ball or drop the gun, drop the, drop the cash on this brand new Tundra. I get excited and impatient when uh, when I decide to do something. You may have noticed that if you're uh, coming here and you're a Gladiator fan. And I hope the Gladiator people stick around as well as the older uh, Tundra crowd that I've had, not in years, I mean that have been on the channel for a while uh, because we've got lots of things coming up on this truck. Um, I've got a couple more things coming right now as a matter of fact and I'm contemplating whether I want to lift this truck because I love lifted trucks especially full size and mid-size the Tacoma is awesome when it's lifted but so is this truck I've seen uh, pictures and things of people that have done it man it looks awesome but my other option is to leave it factory height and add wheel spacers to kind of poke out the tires a little bit because I do really love that look as well I've done it before on my, I believe it was my cement Tundra, but it might have been the one after that, I don't remember, where I put some wheel spacers on and it looked awesome. I think I went with inch and a quarter or something like that. Now, I know there's a bit of controversy when it comes to wheel spacers about putting extra wear on everything down there, but I think, you know, as long as you're reasonable and don't go nuts, an inch and a quarter, I don't think that's really too much. I don't think that makes enough difference that it's really going to cause you any problems. So I'm trying to decide be between the two. If you've done one or the other, uh, leave a comment on this new Tundra. I know lots of people have done it on the previous generation, but I'd be curious to know how it was if you did the install on the wheel spacers. I've heard you have to do some shortening of the studs or something. I, I don't exactly know. So I'd be curious how the install went. Anyway, just wanted to give you a, a bit of an update. Those are three things that I've done most recently. Many, many more to come. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've done any of these things. I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.